What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Christian Hanna Har here with top five horror movies of 1995. I mean, we're just rolling through this, but that's okay. I've got some really cool new top five type videos coming for you guys, so don't worry. But here we are, top five of 1995. Still a cool year. Obviously, there's one movie you probably know is going to make this list, but you don't know where. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and get right into it, because that's why we're here, right? Coming in at number five for me in the year 1995 is, you know, one of the, it comes from one of the greatest TV shows ever. And I'm not talking about Roseanne, and I'm not talking about Friends. I'm talking about Tales from the Crypt. That's right, Demon Knight. Demon Knight, you know, I remember buying a VHS copy, of, excuse me, a DVD copy of this around 2010 or 9 at a, at a pawn shop. Never popped it in because I didn't appreciate the, the beauty that was Tales from the Crypt yet. But since then, I've got the Blu-ray Screen Factory release of it, watched it, loved it. I'm a sucker for a good anthology, and as you're going to see, there's going to be a couple more in this list. So hopefully that's not too much of a big deal for you guys. But uh, yeah, Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. I think this came out right about the time the show was ending, so they kind of were going out with a bang. I think there was another movie that they did with a couple of them, but I haven't seen that one. But Demon Knight, because it did get the Screen Factory release, I saw it, I watched it, I loved it period next. Coming in at number four is another anthology piece, Tales from the Hood. That's right, another movie that eluded me for years. I will say that this was a blockbuster release video that I remember seeing all the time with that big skeleton with the glasses on, Tales from the Hood. And I would tell myself, I just don't know, do I want to see that movie? I just, it doesn't sound like my cup of tea. Finally, Scream Factory gives me the initiative to want to get the movie and watch it, so I did. And I absolutely love Tales from the Hood. I thought the opening, uh, the opening piece with the cops and then the mayor guy, uh, fantastic stuff. It's kind of relevant more so now today than it was ever, uh, but I'll stay out of that too much. To, I don't wanna get into the political side of things, but Tales from the Hood, a great anthology piece, a great anthology piece with a cool Crypt Keeper type guy, that scientist looking guy in the movie. Uh, funny stuff, I like Tales from the Hood. Um, I know that there was a part two, I don't have a whole lot of good things to say about that one, but this first one, fantastic next coming in at number three a movie that took place where i grew up that's right new orleans candy man farewell to the flesh you know making a sequel to candy man was definitely going to be a, a tough thing to do because that first one was absolutely perfect i don't think there was much else you could have done a candy man to make it better but you know farewell to the flesh is simply a very good follow-up to the uh, initially incredible movie candy man is it as good as the first one absolutely not is it really good you bet it is. Candyman Farewell to the Flesh, a really cool movie with a cool atmosphere as well. You know, going from Chicago's Cabrini Green down to, to New Orleans, it works, it feels right, and the opening sequence to Candyman Farewell to the Flesh is really, really awesome. I dig it a lot. Next. Coming in at number two is Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. That's right, it's not number one on my list. As much as I talk about it, as much as I love it, as much as I watch it, it's not number one. 1995 has a movie that's very important to me, and you're going to find out what that number one is. But let's talk about Halloween for just a second. Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. This is where, you know, the buck stops, so to speak, as far as storytelling goes, as far as the evolution of Michael. We get to a point in Halloween 6 where after this, they completely reboot the series again. Uh, some people think it was because Jamie Lee wanted to come back, and that was just the main reason they, they went after it. I think that uh, the reason that was allowed to happen was because there was really no... There was places to go from Halloween 6, but it would have got so wild, and people were already having a bad taste in their mouth for Halloween 6, that they just felt it was probably best to just leave it where it was. With that being said, this movie has aged very gracefully and has that element that no other Halloween movie has in the franchise. Uh, some people get it, some people don't, and that's fine. I'm a person that gets it, loves it, love the look of Michael, love that George P. Wilbur came back, love the music in the movie, Alan Haworth did a fantastic job in the score, and Michael is at his fiercest and baddest in my opinion. If I was going to run into one Michael, uh, that I knew I would have no chance against, it would be George P. Wilbur's Halloween 6, Michael. So, there you go. I got a couple honorable mentions. I want to shout out Village of the Dam from John Carpenter. Not his best 90s work, but still a good movie to watch from 1995. Leprechaun 3, Leprechaun Hits Vegas. Uh, it didn't make my top 5 because there were still some really good movies from this year. And, uh, I still love it, but, you know, Leprechaun 3, it is what it is what it is. It's Leprechaun 3. And I want to give another shout out to Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions, another one from Clive Barker that people don't seem to talk too much about. Uh, it, well, that's probably because it's definitely not his greatest piece he's ever worked on, but Lord of Illusions, a good movie and a good 90s horror film. Let's get down to it with number one of 1995. My number one, this probably would be a movie nobody saw coming, 
But uh, some of my close personal friends, like Tommy or Kalen, hopefully they've seen this movie. Shout out to my brother, because I know he loves this movie. 1995's Evil Ed. This is one of the most bizarre movies I've ever seen, and I can't help but just... I can't help but just have the best time of my life when I watch this. It's wild, it's crazy, it's about this man who edits films at this company and he gets moved to the horror division and then the guy wants him to keep editing and keep editing and keep editing and he starts having hallucinations and all the whole film, it feels so just, it feels so taboo the whole movie. There's lines in this movie I can't repeat because I don't want this video to get in trouble, but it is over the top ridiculous. Cinemasker did a review of it a long time ago, and that's how I discovered the film. And Arrow Video has since put it out on Blu-ray, and Evil Ed, it's one of the most funny, nastiest, uh, most comedic horror movies I've ever seen. And part of the comedy is the horror executive guy who uh, clearly had all his lines dubbed over, and his, his voice barely matches up with what he's saying. And, but that definitely adds to the charm of it. Evil Ed. There's not too much I can really describe in this video without you just having to see it for it to really, you know, sink in of how funny and how good of a movie this is. It was not made in America. That's another thing. So it's got that weird vibe to it. It feels taboo. Evil Ed. If it wasn't, you know... It, 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 Arrow Video put it up for a reason. It has a cult following. It's one of the craziest movies I've ever seen. And that's it. Evil Ed, one of the best horror movies of the 90s period. So that's my top five for 1995. It's a great year. I've actually got some anthologies coming in, which I'm a sucker for a good anthology. Sue me. But uh, that's it. 1995. We're moving on to 1996 next. And I know a lot of you know that there's a certain film that came out in 1996 that has somewhat importance. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, this is Christian Hannah Horror saying see you guys next time.